Hello and welcome to another episode of our single player survival Minecraft series. But we're not actually in survival right now, we're in creative because we are in my test world here. And we are going to try to figure out a way to make our stables. Because, so this is the plan for our castle that we're currently building. And this section is what we're going to work on today in our survival world. And uh, this, is, this is the stable. But we want some way to open and close for to get the horses in and out of these stalls. However, there are some issues here. I like visually or aesthetically this one. However, there's a problem. If you ride a horse in, we can't get out either. So there need to be a way for us to get out. Also, it's not tileable, uh, which means that we can't have the same on this one without interfering with this and such. So let's see what we can come up with. Okay, we have some open area over here. So let's try it here. Okay, I built up a bit a mock of our stable here. Okay, so if we can make all these three work next to each other, I'll be happy. So let's start with what we had. There we go. That works very well. And it's uh, actually really simple. Uh, it's just the redstone line into three blocks like this. And of course you could do that as well on it. But then you will, will get that. But you can get the same functionality and save on the beaters. But it won't look as good. And... Um, okay. How can we now make this tileable? We could, of course, have every other one have the, this on the other side. So on this side, and then on the fair. Hmm. I'm gonna see what I can figure out here. Okay, I think that this would work. It does look a bit funky there. Okay, not on the opening, but on the closing it does that. But it should be tileable. The problem is that the button powers redstone wire right next to this piston. And the reason we have it like that is because now we can put the button here and it works. The exact same way. We need to have a space for the player to get in, right? Would this work or will that this would power that? Yeah. Huh. Because it's of course right next. But wait, we don't need this button if we have it like this. Okay, that works great. Only problem is that it might be hard to reach that button if there's a hole. It shouldn't be too hard. I don't think that would be a problem. Decided to move the hole to the middle from the side and I lowered the piston and put a full block on top of it. So it looks neater. Oops. And it's uh, quite a bit smaller. But now we have the problem that now we can't see the button from the outside and we of course need the button to open <laughs> so um, like no matter if we put it oh we need to open first so if we have the button here this will happen if we have the button here this will happen as well because we could 
This should work. Yeah. But it will do that. That is... I'm not a fan of that. Looks great on the opening, but on the close, that's like... Janky. We don't like jank. We could do it like this, move the button over here and have a, a repeater. That would stop the piston, but it will not stop this, of course. This, because it's right there, of course. And I'm thinking, how could we... We can't have like it, have it up here, because we would be able to get the signal down through this block to down here without having anything visible. And it's done. I realized that if I put a note block under the button, we can actually get a signal because this will power this and uh, this will be quasi powered by quasi connectivity and this will update and stuff. And we have this slime block contraption here so that it doesn't matter if we press the button on that block or that block, which either one we press will move this observer. Like so. Which means that we can have one button on the front here and one button in the back and they will do the same thing. And as you can see, they don't interfere with the others. Okay, let's look down here. So the two buttons trigger one of these pistons each, which move this observer down, which uh, basically has a T flip flop, which triggers this piston and moves this block back and forward. Uh, that gives us the functionality of uh, the button. Every second try it will open and then the other one try it will close. And it moves this block in here above this torch, completing the circuit. So if we do that, you can see the power can go through now. Power goes through, powers these torches, which go into these blocks here. And powering these blocks triggers the three pistons here, as well as the trapdoors on top. So what we are powering are these three blocks. And now they're unpowered, so the pistons are down and the tractors are in this way. Then we activate them and this is what it looks like. I managed to improve it. There are no note blocks and they don't interact with each other. These buttons do work. It doesn't feel like they should work because you can't see any redstone, but they do. And, um, okay, so I realized that, of course, there are other ways to update a, um, a uh, piston that's getting powered by quasi-connectivity. So, we have um, these kind of clocks on each of them. So, this, we need unfortunately two per, per stall since we have the two buttons triggering separate pistons. So, we have this clock which will update this one if there is not a full block here, otherwise it will of course just go up and down constantly. And we replace this one with a slab and then we have this here and we needed to connect this one here because otherwise of course the bottom part would be pushed down and it wouldn't work. And so uh, this is how it works and all of them are the same. We don't need the change we need here was that we need to replace this with furnaces, the corner blocks there under the repeaters like so because furnaces can't be moved by slime blocks and now all of these 
work just as you would expect. And there we go, we have the horse stalls completed. Well, the register at least. I have built all the stalls in our survival world now. And they do all the work. I've tested them all. I won't bore you by showing all of them. Let's do a few here. As you can see, they work. And um, I put in a floor. Got some crazy patterns and stuff. So here is where you come in. Then there is a bit of a uh, hall here. Uh, this whole area here is kind of open. Here would be some uh, water stuff uh, for the horses and such, where the horses can drink. Here would be space for like um, carriages and such. And then of course we have the 10 horse stalls. Then here we have a stair that leads into the castle itself. This is where there will be a big door here. Then we will have a second floor here, where they will store hay and other just supplies and stuff. Uh, so we will have this floor here, another floor there, then we will have the third floor starting at the height of the wall, and then of course the building will keep going upwards. But uh, yes, this is what we have so far. We now have a ceiling. Tried my best at doing a ribbed vault here. It looks pretty nice, I think. Then we have a bit of a wooden ceiling here. Here we will have a, a bit of a crane that would lift heavy things up here. Here we're going to have a stone floor since we have a vaulted ceiling below can support the weight and uh, we're going to build these walls up to that height of the wall let's fight these guys ha ha don't don't no I'm so dead. No! <laughs> I'm so close. Okay. Ha! Huh. The walls have been extended to cover the second floor now. And I decorated the outside a bit here. On this side, it looks like this. These are, of course, windows, a window there. We have a big gate. I put in a floor. Uh, yes, so this is a big window, there are some windows along the sides, both sides, uh, which will of course be filled in with glass later. There are corbels for wooden beams above here, and we have some arches to support wooden beams to make the structure a bit more to a bit stronger and uh, yeah <gasps> they have come back for more let's give them what they want then 
Okay. And I'm not gonna touch those guys because I'm too scared that they will hit my animals and I don't want my animals to get hurt so I'm just gonna leave them to this spot. I put in some buttresses here and on the other side to support future flying buttresses here. And I'm also thinking that we are actually going to split these buttresses and they're going to support both the main structure here and then go up and support the structure that this goes on top here. And if we go closer, the wall here have been extended to both sides. And we have a bit of a staircase here. This leads in here. And we have matriculations along the outside and loopholes. We have a bit of a balcony here. That pillar is going to be removed. That just, was just me pillaring up and I forgot to remove it. And yes, so that's where we are currently. I think we should put in another ribbed vault here because now this, this room is a storage room, the one below is the stable, and those are both accessed from the outside. The floor up here will be connected to the inside of the castle, and it will be part of like the, the living parts of the areas of the castle. So I don't know what we would have, have up here, some form of solar maybe. Uh, but that is a future problem. But I think it would be nice to be able to have some nicely decorated stone floor. A lot fancier than what we have done there. Because that's like the same as we have on the exterior. Because it's like a working area rather than a living area. So yes, I think a ribbed vault in here would be great. I also think that we should put a bit of a roof on this wall area. On both sides here. I was thinking that um, like we have this the crenellations here and we have the flying buttresses to help support the roof as well. So we could have um, I'm kind of just thinking like a kind of like half slab a slope on the uh, roof here on both sides and it would go to this point and then this area here would not have a roof i think that would look nice so um let's see what we can do i just put in the <laughs> vault and <laughs> now the place is full of monsters hello you can't get me It is time to battle some pillagers. Hiding up here somewhere. No? no more baddies for us. The stable is finished. It's 
So this is what the structure looks like from the outside. It's got a bit taller, but that's not the stable anymore. That's another thing on top, so we're not doing that now. Okay. Then we enter here under this stained glass window. We enter the stable itself. We have a little bit of storage. We have some water for the horses. Some hay. We have the 10 stalls. All the way there with funky doors. They all have some hay so that the horses can eat. And then there's a stair where there would be a big door that leads into the castle itself. I haven't built this wall because we'll do that when we build the structure here. Then we have some lighting. Here we have two uh, carriages. So here's just a normal trend, like a good transport one. And they can sit up here there the horses which will be connected to this and here we have a bit of an enclosed one with some storage on the back she can sit in here while you get driven around and we can oops this is a bit finicky you can do that okay okay and you can sit up here and drive and then we have the lift up there, it lifts up goods. And if we go up, we have a bit of a storage area. Have some barrels of something here. And we have the windlass for the lift. These are supposed to be saddles. I didn't want to just put them put saddles in item frames because it's so two-dimensional. I wanted something a bit more three-dimensional. And these are supposed to be like the stirrups here, like you sit on top there and then this is where your foot goes or whatever. And uh, yeah, these are the saddles. Then we have some hay for the horses. Just some storage. Some shelving. And here we have some barding for the horses so basically horse armor but it's like covered in cloth so it looks all pretty and a little slit in the front so that the horse don't get tangled and stuck with its legs when it's running and on top you have a hole for the horse's head and here we have some just random storage some firewood along this wall here that doesn't exist yet but like I said previously there will be a wall here so we have firewood for the castle uh, good to be able to stay warm and stuff then we have lots of barrels that are kept in by these walls here so that they don't roll away and a little bit of storage and some just barrels here that haven't been put in where they're supposed to go yet then if we go up, we have a little bit of more storage. Okay, um, and this is inside the wall. Nothing fancy here. Now we're on top of the wall. There were some bushes and some benches, so people can sit here and relax uh, when. We're not at siege or attacked, so this is of course where guards will stand and shoot at attackers if there are any. But when it's not under attack, then this is like a nice uh, little area to walk around. And this is of course the inside, so don't need any crenellations here, just some decorative stuff. And benches because who doesn't like to sit down for a bit okay and these three windows here we have a big one in the center and two thin ones on sides will be stained glass windows later but uh, we're not that far yet 
also don't have a floor in here yet because we'll do that when we're making the inside so I don't want to do too much up here yet since I don't know how it will fit in with the rest of the castle yet okay if we go over here can see a bit from above Actually, let's just um, do this. So, this is our first structure of our castle. Turned out pretty nice, I think. 